Hey, it's Time Again from Cracked Rabbit Gaming, and I'm going to show you how to create a seamless tile. Now, technically, this is a tutorial for RPG Maker VX Ace, but if you happen to stumble on this video um, just because you're looking for a tutorial on seamless tiles, that's fine. Um, this will still apply. The only reason this has to do with RPG Maker VX Ace is because of the size of the tile we're using, and this is just part of my series on auto tiles but the process is the same, so I'm going to use Photoshop. You can also use GIMP, and I'll uh, explain a few of the little differences there. Um, so first, let's just make a new canvas. So I'm just going to do a large tile here, even though eventually we're going to need 32 by 32 pixels, which is really small. It's easier to show you the difference um, or like how to where the seams are with a large file like this. So. First I'll just do something simple, and we'll just do some clouds, and that'll just generate, I have it on blue color here, um, and that's just going to generate this random pattern, So, and I'm going to make this so it's not a background layer. Um, so now if I take this and define it as my pattern, which I can do um, right here, define pattern, and yeah, that's fine, and then we'll make another one and I'm just going to make this really big, even though you're not going to see the whole thing. And then I go and apply that pattern that I just made. So here's this pattern. And now if I zoom in more, uh, it's very clear that there are seams all the way around that image. And, you know, uh, it does not look, uh, this does not look like clean... Uh, fluffy clouds. So this is what we want to get rid of. So with a, an image like this that's just kind of random, um, or for whatever you're doing, but uh, in this case it's a random thing, we're gonna go to Filter, Other, and Offset, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna wrap it's gonna wrap the image around. So if I set this back to zero uh, and then I just sort of start clicking here to move this, you'll see that it's, it's just sliding the image over and wrapping it around, and we have it set to wrap around. Now this offset, if you're in GIMP, um, I think it's Layer Transform Offset. Um, in Photoshop it's under Filter Other. And, but it's basically the same uh, tool here, and we have Preview On. And so you'll see it wraps around, so you can see that seam, and then we can wrap it down as well. So because this is a 480 by 480, we could do uh, 240, 240, and then that will be perfectly centered now. So now the corners are in the center. So now what we can do is we can use a tool like the rubber stamp, the or uh, the clone stamp. We can use the spot healing brush, the patch tool, whatever you want. Um, I'll use the healing brush and so we've got proximity match, you can use content aware, uh, if you don't know content aware that's like if it, it'll actually recognize like objects in the in the photo if that's what you're doing and it'll uh, try to preserve those so like say you stretch out like there's there are example videos you can watch if there's like a beach scene with a sailboat on the water and you want to stretch it out and make it wider uh, normally, if you stretch it out, it stretches the whole thing, including the boat, but with content aware, not with this tool, but just with content aware, um, like transformations, it'll stretch out the beach and the water, but it'll keep that boat actually the same dimensions, so it won't look weird. Um, it's pretty amazing. Anyway, so with this, I can just paint along this seam. That was a pretty bad job, but whatever. Um, and it's trying to blend it here. That doesn't look very good. Uh, I can try content aware and maybe this will look a little bit better. Um, but so what we, we don't want to do is go all the way up to this edge. Um, I mean, even though we do want to get rid of the seam all the way to the edge, but if we go all the way to the edge, uh, you might be able to see it if I... I'll, Okay, so now this, you know, whatever, uh, this looks pretty good, you know, I, I mostly got rid of that seam, but now if I offset this again, look what happens. Now, 
you'll see that there are seams again <laughs> because uh, because I didn't just go to that very just getting rid of those pixels all tiny I actually like went over this edge too so now when it wraps around it's messing up again um, so instead of doing that offset to be exactly centered we'll just do a little bit you know not not quite 240 and that way um, and now in at least in Photoshop if you just go to control F or just the first thing on here it lets you do the same you know repeat the last filter you used so now I can just hit control F and it'll keep offsetting it by that same amount which is not quite half so it's just gonna keep moving it a little a little bit at a time so now I can kind of try to cover up these seams and again don't go all the way to the edge and I'll offset it again and see if there's anything there and I can just kinda keep doing that and um, you know if you if you use just a small amount of offset then you can just keep doing it and it'll keep scrolling around um, but you can also just go back and change your offset amount if you need to and so that looks pretty good I don't really see anything um, so now I will go back and define a new pattern and I'll go apply it here and so now if I zoom out of course if I zoom way out because this is such a big image well you see that it's repeating um, just because there's so much contrast in this image um, but if we zoom in more then you know at least you don't really see seams even though you can tell that there's like this white cloud this you see these shapes and so that's another trick to doing tiles uh, where you kind of want uh, you don't want distinct parts in here like this you know you don't want to be able to see that shape because if you can see like a very distinct shape you're gonna see it over and over again so this is kind of a too high of a contrast um, but let's just delete that and I'll just show you now if, if you're just uh, like drawing by hand um, well actually I can fill that with white uh, and then I'll just draw with the pencil tool and make this bigger so now let's just say I'm drawing some pattern here now if I offset this I can kind of try to connect these lines that I sort of was drawing <laughs> this looks really bad I know um, but I'm not gonna spend a ton of time doing this just because that's not the point so now let's just offset this some more and you know this one kinda looks crappy and there's that big white spot so maybe I should add another squiggly line across here and we'll just try that so now let's define that as a pattern and we can go back here add this pattern here if you need you know I, I know I'm going quickly through some of this stuff um, if you don't know how to add this pattern here you can look up other tutorials but um, it's just you can double click on a layer here or you can go to FX and then you can click on pattern um, also I forgot to mention that in GIMP you actually have to export your file I believe the only way to do it is you save your image and then you save it as a pattern file as a .pat file and then you I don't know you import it again or maybe it just shows up automatically I'm not sure I don't really use GIMP um, but you can look that up if uh, if you need to so this looks alright you know um, it's a poorly drawn image but uh, you know just as a repeating tiling pattern like yeah you know whatever uh, so of course you should spend much more time on yours and uh, also what you might want to do so you can add multiple layers of course and so let's say you're doing like a wood um, like a wood pattern when you use the offset it only 
applies it to the selected layer. So like if I do another layer here and let's get a red color and then I go like this and then I offset, see the blue layer is not moving. And that's fine, you know, you could merge these layers if you wanted to, but I like to do non-destructive editing. So I like to keep a lot of layers separated because it, you know, I don't care about the file size and the disk space it's taking up. I'd much rather keep my options open later if I need to change something. So, uh, but what you can do is like you can, let's say we want to add noise here and, you know, let's say we're doing this as like a wood grain or something. This is you know, not going to look very good. <laughs> But let's just pretend that this is like a nice wood grain or something, or you say you took a photo of wood or some other pattern that doesn't have a lot of uh, like distinct lines in it. So you could do this as like your base layer and make sure that that tiles correctly. And then um, we can let's delete that stuff. And then let's say now we want to add some dark lines to show like the wood paneling or something. So now I can, you know, kind of like go through and add some stuff like this. And of course I am going all the way to the edge and I'm not, if I, if I was drawing completely straight lines, that would be fine because it would wrap around and it, you know, it'd be fine. But so, you know, say you're doing something like this and this is now going to be like your wood floor or whatever anyway. So then you can now offset this top layer because it's fine that the, the bottom layer, you know, we already know that the bottom layer tiles and stuff like that. So, um, and another thing you might want to do this as a large image and then scale it down, um, down to the size you need, which is 32 pixels in RPG maker. And one other thing I'll say is that if you're using a brush tool, let's say I'm using like a pretty large brush that is feathered a lot. So as you can see, this looks more like spray paint. Um, if I draw a line down or, you know, say like a squiggly line or something, and then I'm going to want to connect these edges as they Oops, <laughs> forgot I changed that. That's not the what I wanted. Okay, um, so now I want to add this together. Well, if I draw over this, now I'm actually, it might be kind of hard to tell here. Um, so I can turn this off too. So the part that I was connecting, I actually just painted over that part. And so now the part that I connected is thinner than the overlapped part because this is a feathered brush. So, you know, the more I draw on this, the more, you know, even if I'm staying perfectly in, in the same line, the, just the feathering is adding more paint to it, to the outside of it. And so that's something you have to deal with. So one thing you can do is you can use the marquee tool, um, which I, let's uh, I'll move this up and delete some of this. So I'll delete that part first. And now, so now I just have this hard edge and now I'll go back to this brush and I'll just kind of like draw this line down. And so that way I'm actually not going over the same part anymore because like this lets me only draw inside the marquee if you make a marquee like this. So uh, this is probably isn't going to be perfect. As you can see now there's a kind of a seam there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, maybe I can, oh, that didn't work at all. <laughs> Uh, let's try like the, or actually we could do like the blur tool um, to kind of blur that edge a little bit, or we could use the smudge tool possibly. Anyway, so if, the point is if you're using feathered brushes like this and you're trying to connect lines, you can run into more problems because now you're painting over stuff. If you're using a pencil like I was before, um, oops pencil, then, you know, this is easy to connect a line because it's all just pixels. There's no feathering. So I can draw over the same thing, even though I'm probably not going to be totally precise. 
I can just keep drawing over this and it's not gonna look any different really um, except I'm just making it a little bit wider so those are things to keep in mind um, but I guess I can show you what one of these looks like in the game let's uh, probably can't go back too far um, so let's say I'll get my cloud pattern back. This is the one that tiles correctly. And now I'll resize this. So now if I resize this to 32, which is what we want, um, well, first of all, uh, it might be hard to see on this video, but if you look all the way at the edges, you can see the transparency coming through because it kind of bl blended or blurred the edges a little bit when I resized it. So one thing I can do is um, I'm just hitting Control J to copy that to duplicate that layer. So now, and I can just rasterize this layer style too. So now uh, that that just um, got rid of that transparency um, that I didn't want. And now I should offset this again. If I offset it, that's going to be a huge amount because I was using that uh, really big canvas before. So now, if I go back to 100%, and, you know, you might be able to see some of it, maybe not. Like I said, this actually isn't a very good image to use because uh, it has so much contrast there. But if I go and open, like, one of... This is the one I want. A uh, inside A5. This has just regular tiles. These are not auto tiles. Then I can pull this into Photoshop, and I will move this layer over here. So now I can just replace one of these tiles and go like that. And I actually already have a hotkey set up to save this. Um, so now I, I've just saved it as a ping file and I'll copy this into my folder and go back here and just get rid of this stuff and you won't see it right away um, oh actually you did okay well sometimes you won't <laughs> uh, if you don't see it refreshed right away, you can just open the database and just hit OK, and that'll force it to refresh. Um, anyway, so now I can do this. And like I said, you are seeing this repetitive pattern because of the clouds, but you're not actually seeing like a hard line. Um, and so that's all we really want to get rid of. But uh, if you look at you know some of these other you know some of these other ones see there the contrast is very low like you can just barely see that there's a texture on there um, and that's you know if you look closely like you see that this does repeat there's kind of like this shape in there that you see over and over again um, and of course this is intentional you this is supposed to look like a tiled floor and stuff like that but anyway so those are the basics of creating just a regular seamless tile. Um, there are a lot more videos on, on YouTube, I'm sure. But uh, those are some tips. And that is just the first part that you need to know to create an auto tile. So in the next part, I'm going to go over all of that and show you how to make a full auto tile. So I hope this helped, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.